Hello and welcome to Let's Plant Recap. My name is Chuck and this is the show where we look at the past episode of Let's Plant and react to the comments. We are looking at episode 82. This is the soil mix I'm using in my propagation planter. So if you haven't watched the video yet, here's the link to it. So to summarize that episode, it was basically me placing soil inside the planter and it was lots of work. So on to the comments. First one is from Monolop. What? A truck? Why not? <laughs> yeah, apart from the planter, I think I would need it for other parts of the garden. I think it would be best if I had more than what I would need. That way, we would save on trips. From around the house with Cheryl. I need a few trucks for my garden. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> yeah, maybe you could have a look at local gardening supplies centers around you. That's how I found Soilworks. From Connie Beal. This is probably a stupid question, but I thought succulents have a low root system. So why is your planter box so deep? This is a very good question, a very valid question, not, not stupid at all. You're exactly right that they have a shallow root system, but in this case, this is more of a... The reason is quite silly. The main, the main reason is that I just don't like bending down, so <laughs> I built it really high. And the other reason is that I would like to create smaller planters next to it or around it, maybe create a terrace. So I'm going to start with something tall and gradually build smaller ones around it. So yeah, starting with something tall. From She's Lupe. Propagation videos. My favorite. Great video. It may be tired just looking at you shovel all of that. It turned out great though. <laughs> yeah, I... It took me a few days, even close to a week, to get everything out of my driveway. I could show you right after this video. I'm in the garage and I'll just lift the door after this. From Baby Allegrio. Oh, I love those plants with red flowers. What are they? Roses? And you are a very good succulent producer now. I love how you illustrate your way of gardening. Keep on your passion. Thank you so much, Baby Allegrio. Baby. Hi, baby. Those plants, they are pelargoniums. My mother-in-law collects them. She has many varieties of them. At the moment, it seems like only the red and the pink ones have bloomed, but the others will follow suit. It's... We are approaching the end of winter and it's only less than a week before spring officially starts in the southern hemisphere. So expect a big show of flowers really soon. From Jane Tan. Is Echeveria afterglow a tough plant? E no yeah maybe. <laughs> yes, no, maybe. It depends on your climate mainly. But comparatively they don't do as well as imbricata. So if you're having problems with, with imbricata, then you might have problems with afterglow. I find that afterglow tends to dry out more easily than imbricata, especially when they're young. But once they have grown mature enough, when, once they have grown big enough, then like, like most other echeverias, when they are established, they would be able to withstand the elements, you know. They are better equipped to take on the sun, the, the rains and stuff. But while they are young, they are quite sensitive. So make sure to gradually move them out into the sun rather than just moving them out straight away because they would burn. From Succulent Fame. OMG, that's a lot of work. Muscle work. Just watching you do it is making my arms hurt. That's commitment right there. <laughs> Thanks, Sheila. No one else would do it for me, so I have to do it. From Karen Lottering, thanks to that, I've got an idea of my own. Some of those succulents you got is rare here in South Africa. Haha. <laughs> Over the past few days, Karen has been sending me some photos of, uh, of her work, and it's starting to come together, you know? She was working on a small yard in their garden. Good luck, keep at it, and it will turn out great. From the Dub Rose One, such hard work, all that shoveling, Chuck. So looking forward to the propagation videos ahead. My favorite. As you can tell from my getup, I'm doing some gardening today. I'm just taking a break from gardening just to record this recap. 
And yes, I'm doing propagations right now. From Clebo 1. Yes, propagation time. My body is ready. <laughs> Spring is here. I am gonna chop my succulents. Can't have enough of them. Chop. Your garden looks like a typical South African one except you are missing aloes. Is it because the weather there don't permit aloes? Looking forward to episode 83. I've got some aloes and just not a fan of them because as you can imagine they, they can be quite invasive and you noted that in your response to me. I've got a few here though. I know I have a polyphyla, uh, what's the correct name for brevifolia? Yeah, aloe brevifolia and some of the smaller types. I'm trying to avoid planting them in the ground because they would just spread like crazy. From in him, sexta seven, seven sevens. Finally, this is what I've been waiting for. Although it's a bit anticlimactic, I say that. I say that half jokingly. So many people like to make soil mix a complicated affair. I suppose it may be more fun for certain types of people that way. It's great to see all of the propagated plants. Who doesn't love free plants? Yeah, so many people fuss about their mix, but it's only fair since they're working with pots, so they have to be a bit more careful of there. But in my case, I'm working on the ground, I'm working on a larger area, so drainage is less of a concern. Because in a large space, water can diffuse in all directions rather than just downwards, as I've mentioned in my video. So I tend to make it easier for me. I just pick I just pick a few materials and just order them in bulk. So in my case, it's just garden soil and scoria. I don't have to go with coarse sand, perlite, pumice, whatever. I just keep it simple and that makes that and that keeps the cost down for me. If you're new to my channel or if you haven't visited my channel for quite a while, then you would notice that I now have two main series that I'm working on. The first would be my vlog which is Let's Plant and the other would be Seriscapedia which is a series of educational videos which are mostly just tips, tricks, tutorials, techniques that are extracted from my main series because otherwise they are buried deep in the episodes and you won't find them unless you go through all of them. So if you're like most people who just need a quick reference, then Seriscapedia is for you. And like the recap, which is the companion show for Let's Plant, I'm also coming out with Seriscapedia Marginalia. Marginalia meaning these are the notes, the little notes that you scribble or doodle onto the margins of a page of a book. So whenever I come across something interesting or noteworthy in the comments for the Seriscapedia, then I'm going to create a separate video just discussing it. And that's what Marginalia will be about. Thank you for watching another recap. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on next episodes. My main Let's Plant series, my vlog, comes out every Tuesday morning my time. That's in the evening, Eastern time, on the other side of the world, because I live in Australia. And the recap for Let's Plant, which you're watching now, comes out Saturday evening my time. That would be Saturday morning, Eastern time. You could also check out my Instagram, that's at Seriscapades, and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Next up would be harvesting this Petrocidum fosterianum. This is better known in Australia as Gold Mound and in some areas as Angelina. They are quite dense here now and some of them are even climbing up the wall. Up next would be Sidum rubra tinctum and Sidum pachyphylum or the jelly beans.